I am surrounded by garbage. Don't buy any of it. Anti-gift guide today on how to drink. So the holidays are approaching and right about now, a lot of people are trying to reach their greedy little hands straight into your pockets and convince you to buy things for yourself or for the cocktail or mixology fan that in your life, right? And I wanted to nip that right in the bud and just try to find out the stuff you didn't need to buy. The stuff that should just stay in the cart and not get ordered and not get sent home. Because the universe, you, the world, the planet, probably doesn't need any of this stuff. And I'm coming in strong here because I think that I ordered a lot of garbage. But there is a possibility however slim, that one or two of these might actually turn out to be a buy recommendation. I don't know. I'm unboxing them all right now for the first time. I think this will be actually fun and instructive. I don't, I'm not joking. I think this could be cool. I did a video a while back where I talked about like, here's the basics that you need for your bar. And really the basics that you need for the bar are also the things you need for the bar. Like it doesn't really get much more advanced than the basics you need for your bar. So I stand by that video. I think that if you're starting a home cocktail kit, or you have somebody that you know that is interested in mixology, check that out. There's a link in the pin comment below. I'm not gonna change that really. There's not, there's not like a yearly update to like, here's the new stuff you need. All of the dude blogs, you know, the uncrates, the high consumptions, the words, the gear patrols, they're coming out with right now, this time of year, gift guides, okay? You don't need that stuff. You just don't. So today on how to drink, the anti-gift guide, the don't buy me things with the caveat that maybe one of these will be cool. First things up, uh, what is this? This is a God Goodinger, Goodinger three bottle liquor dispenser from the Taproom collection. Okay, all right. I already know this is a piece of shit. You see these at like your um, your old uncle, your old your old your old uncle down who lives in um, he lives in Margate down off of Atlantic City. He's got one of these right next to his bumper pool table. There we go. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. All right, stop. Nobody needs that. Oh, this is a piece of shit. You gotta unscrew these. Oh no, they don't unscrew, they pop out. You take this guy out. It feels like, this feels like really cheap plastic, right? And you stuff it in there. And then you take this guy and you turn it upside down and you slide it into the slot here. Oh yeah, sure, that's great. That's just perfect. You take your thing, you put it over here, bung up your bottle tight, and you do this. You flip it over and you slot it in. And there you got it. Now you got Uncle Tony's liquor dispenser. So let's say I wanted to do a pour. Are these free pouring or are they measured? Oh man. So the whole thing feels pretty flimsy. And if these were all full, it would really feel flimsy. Like look at this action and you can do that. And that really just inspires confidence. Give me a poor fighting cock, my favorite cock referencing bourbon. So there's like a little cup down here and it drains the cup and then it fills the cup. Okay, and that's a pour. So are you gonna suggest to me that that is, what is that, how many ounces is that? Let's find out. One and a half, about two ounces actually. I hate it. I mean, I hate this stupid thing. I really just don't understand it. I don't think you need it at all. Well, this is stupid ass crap. Let's just move it along. Juicers are a topic that's near and dear to my heart and I've got these sitting here, let's do them. Um, this one is still in its original packaging. This is a rabbit juicer. I'm gonna unpackage this and I'm gonna use a greasy old pair of diagonal cutters. You may know these by a different name, but that name is an abbreviation of diagonal cutters and it's a name we probably shouldn't use anymore, okay? It's probably not cool. Um, unless, unless it's a name that you have ownership over, in which case that's your business and it's your word, that's fine. But um, they're diagonal cutters for the rest of us. So this is the Rabbit Juicer. Rabbit is a company that makes like really supposedly high-end, artfully designed bar tools. I've never really owned any of them, so I don't really know if they're any good. This is my juicer. This is a, a no-name stainless steel beehive juicer that I've used for seven years, six years now. I love this damn thing. This is an interesting tool. I have thoughts on this I'm gonna get to. And then this one is the cast aluminum whatever juicer that a lot of your fancier bar specialty providers sell. 
and I hate this juicer. And we're going to talk about all the reasons why right after this message from our sponsors. But you know what does make for a great gift? Wine. And as you can see, you've caught me on vacation. You know what's kind of cool is that you can get wines from Bright Cellars delivered here or just about anywhere. And since they're the sponsor of this episode, that's just what I did. I had them send me some wine on vacation. Thanks, Bright Cellars. See, I, I like a glass of wine now and then, but I hate shopping for wine. There's too many choices. I don't know enough to make a pick. I have to physically go to a store and browse? Ugh. Well, Bright Cellars fixes all of that. Instead of doing any of those things, I went to their website and I answered seven super simple questions like, what kind of chocolate do you like? And they use that info to build a personalized wine selection that matches my preferences. The wines come in these boxes of six bottles with these really cool cards that tell you all about the wines, where they come from, how the grapes are grown, how best to serve them, all the things that I don't know much or anything about. After you try the wine, you pop onto your account and rate them. Bright Sellers is going to use that information to fine tune your selections for the next time. Oh, and if it matters to you, Bright Sellers has sustainable and biodynamic wines too now. I don't know what biodynamic means, but it sounds good. I just got this box of wine. Let's see. Let's see this one here. Let's see what this one is like. Uh, this is called Voyage dans du Lent. Le Vent. Voyage dans le Vent. That is delicious. <laughs> that is awesome. Cherry, mildly sweet red. Let's see what the card says here. Subtly complex. This French red blend shows notes of sweet tart red currant, raspberry, elements of spice, earth, a hint of dried herbs, moderate tannins, and acidity. That sounds about right. Right now, Bright Cellars is offering HED fans an exclusive deal. 50% off your first six bottle box. That's six bottles for just $53. Just click the link below, take the quiz, and use my code at checkout. All right, I guess I have no alternative but to uh, sit here by the pool and enjoy this wine while you get back to the episode. Ah, c'est la vie. All right, I'm back. Let's talk about juicers. Um, there's no rhyme or reason to this. I'm just gonna use a glass. So first things first, right? Like this is a stainless steel juicer. When I got it, it had little like red rubber on the handles that slid off after a while and I just threw them away. They're totally unnecessary. Um, they might add extra grip, but really if any water gets in underneath them, they don't work. Here's what's nice about it, right? It's got a big dish, okay? Big dish, and I think I talked about this one on the Bar Basics one. Uh, big dish, very easy to hold a whole lime or lemon in there. A small orange will fit in there, and it does a phenomenal job, okay, of getting all that juice out. But, as much as I love this juicer, Meredith pointed out that there's a design flaw. Meredith is the co-producer of How to Drink, who's sitting right next to the camera right now, and she said, you know what I love? I love this KitchenAid juicer. So I said, okay, great, I'll buy one. This is not brand new. I've had this one for a while. A couple of things about this. Right away, I want to point out that from using it in my dishwasher, it's got like weird pitting in here. Not a great sign, but it's also not a deal breaker. The working side is still fine. It's got um, two dishes here. This is like a textured dish that does the squeezing and straining. And then it's got like a bowl that stores it in. Anyway, so what did she like about this? Well, look, it's got this flat bottom here and a stand and it sits on the bar. And she said, you know, Greg, some people, myself, we don't really have the hand strength. Not that I have like outstanding hand strength or anything. I do, but let's pretend I don't for a moment. We don't have the hand strength to do this like one handed squeeze midair over a thing. What I like about this KitchenAid juicer, okay, is that you put your your lime or your lemon in it and you can just use all the leverage of your body and lean on it and really squeeze it out and then your juice actually gets stored into this bowl at the bottom and it's got a pour spout on the side and you can pour it out and so i bought one to check it out on her recommendation because i thought oh that's interesting it it does that it's pretty cool at that i have no objections to that i do have some objections to the fact that like one i always want to do like i always end up trying to like put more lemons or limes into it than I can and then it overflows and it all back runs down this handle onto my counter. Even like a well and juicy lemon, one half of one that you should expect it to, it can overflow. And there's nothing to warn you that it's going to overflow. You just have to be aware of like, mm, that's probably at its limit. Let's pour that off, measure it and do another squeeze. The other thing I don't like about it is this pitting in the top. I don't like that. That's not a great sign about it being really durable. It's some kind of, um, lower grade steel i think that's got like a chrome or whatever plating on it to make it look pretty as opposed to this which is like solid stainless steel and this son of a gun has held up and looks exactly other than some scratches and wear and tear i mean exactly the same as the day i bought it but other than that i think that it's a pretty cool design i just wish they made it out of better materials 
and maybe had like a sight glass on the side or like if this was clear plastic so you could see how full it was that would be a really cool improvement this is um i recommend this for people who want to be able to to really lean on it and give it a squeeze it's not a bad tool i just wish it was made up, made out of better materials the design is clever and effective this is the rabbit hand juicer easily juice lemons limes or cocktails exprimidor si de citrus i like the uh the german zitus fruschbrus all one word it's durable nylon actually and stainless steel construction and it's top rack dishwasher safe there's a picture here it says picture one put lime in picture two squeeze it that's the whole thing okay here we go let's give it a squeeze it's very light i mean like just right away compared to the stainless it's light and it's made of vinyl which vinyl is pretty strong okay now this thing stinks so what's happening here oh god the whole thing is flexing so what's happening here is the bowl when you squeeze this with your hand the bowl deforms and flexes the handle right this bottom handle i'm touching these two handles together but it's not adding more pressure here because this is bending at the bowl you can feel it deforming which means that probably there's still a lot of juice in this guy that didn't come out it's not actually doing a really good job of directing the full pressure of your squeeze into the citrus part of that is deflecting as this bends so i think it's no good Meredith points out that she thinks there's more pulp coming out of it the holes in this are much smaller whereas this has these big open slots i think the stainless is way better i would not buy this and then this is uh i think these are cast aluminum to be honest i'm not really sure what they are they're not stainless i'll tell you that this one happens to be made by barfly cocktail kingdom makes one pretty almost identically the similar there must be like an old patent or something for a beehive juicer that like bartending supplies want to recreate these things are pieces of absolute shit. They suck. They're really, like, they're not dishwasher safe if they're aluminum because they'll tarnish almost instantly from the heating element. They have this really shallow bowl. Like, if I put a lime in there, you can see that the lime is almost over the, li the, the lip, right? And so if I squeeze it, it's super easy. I mean, like, it'll do this job, right? It will do this job, but it's very easy for the piece of fruit. And right here, you can see the bend of the lime and if we put a lemon in there it'll probably overflow it'll overflow the piece of flesh the lemon flesh will burst over the lip of this bowl because it's not big enough and a lot of your juice and pulp will come out of the outside i mean the, other than that there's really nothing like particularly inferior about it it's totally rigid so it doesn't have the flex issue of the rabbit um it does close completely there's like a little bit of wobble in this hinge that i don't think you see here so much but i have a suspect that that's part of the charm of these kinds of things and i i think barfly makes some pretty cool tools this isn't one of them this one is a piece of shit it does have this nice hook here i guess i've never seen anybody hang these by that hook i just i have never seen it been done i suppose you could stainless steel solid heavy unbreakable the sucker unless the hinge breaks and uh, it's got zero signs of wear and tear. I'll put a, pin, a link in the pinned comment below. This thing's going to, I mean, like, you, you have to put this in your will. This thing's going to last 300 years. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's absolutely brutal. I will say that this does present a solution to a problem that may exist. That this doesn't. And if that's the case, go for the KitchenAid. Just know it's not going to last. It's a temporary thing because it's going to wear out and break. That's all there is to it. Let's move right along to the next thing. Right after this. So this thing has to be assembled. Can you guess if I think that you need this or not? You don't. Well, first off, come on. There's already, it's not even remotely level. What is this piece of junk? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. All right, that's good enough for now. So here we have uh, a jaunty pouring gentleman, a man that pours. It says it's handmade with love. I'll give it this. This pour spout is brass it's like a really nice like if you go to like uh cost plus or whatever and get like a um like a thing for dispensing iced tea it's gonna have a really piece of junk plastic pour spout on it this is a nice brass pour spout it's beautiful and then i will also say that this is silicon lined there's presumably a hose that runs all the way through here it looks like that so i think that actually your liquor whatever it is that you're pouring in that 
is never gonna come in contact with um, the, the, the metal. It won't be flavored by it. Let's put this bottle of fighting cock in there. I think that in order to put a bottle in it, you gotta like pick this guy up and kind of like, eh. Okay, that's really loose. I mean, oh gods. I don't know about that. Nope, 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 nope. I don't like that. That's super duper loose. Look at this. No, it's not unscrew. It's a contact fitting. It's like a silicon bucket. Woo! Terrifying. Ah! Okay, yeah, so it works. It works. Liquor comes through it. I hate it a lot less than I thought I was going to. It's kind of fun. I like the danger of it. I like that this bottle is held in by, by nothing. I mean, just absolutely wildly loose. Just the insane pour speed. Yes, all great. That's a lot of fun. Probably for wine, actually. Maybe it would work better with a wine bottle. Important hint. One, this product is a purely handmade product. The actual product may be different from the photo. Okay. The parts on the main body are not removable. Please do not use violence. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> please don't attack the pouring man. Uh, please don't use violence. Okay. Jesus Christ. Three, please make sure that the product is placed out of reach of minors. Well, for sure, for sure. We wouldn't want them getting any ideas. Uh, this is a giant glass of cheap whiskey. Let's see if we can take our bottle out now that we're done with this. But I think the answer is going to be no. Yeah, do it like this and like that. Eh, I mean, I could have gone better, but open that up, let the air out. Eh, not too bad. That's my precious fighting cock. I didn't want to lose too much of it. So that's a that's a treat. That's something else right there. Don't use violence on it though. Whatever you do, it doesn't respond well to that. But yeah, there's nothing to screw in here. It's just like an open silicon funnel that like kind of grips a bottle, maybe, if you're lucky. Do you need this? Oh my God, do you not need this? There's there's so few things that you need less than this. It is a stupid thing. Should we do this? Let's look at this. This actually, I kind of have high hopes for, okay? This is also from Rabbit. This is the Rabbit Craft Cocktail Set. It's a box. It's got a bunch of tools in here, I think. So what do we got? We got a Rabbit Bar Spoon. Cool, interesting, weird. We'll come to that in a second. We've got this rabbit. Um, I think this is a muddler crossed with a reamer, like a citrus reamer. Interesting. A rabbit makes this like pocket tool and this is what that is. Uh, yeah, it's like a set of bartending tools. It's got a little peeler, a channel knife on this side. On this side, we've got a grater. We've got a mixing glass, a little light for its look. This is the part that I was the most interested in, to be perfectly honest. This is this strainer, which is super interesting to me. I don't know if it's any good, but I couldn't help myself. The look is so cool. So, I mean, that's their strainer, which I think is super duper neat. It didn't occur to me that this was gonna be silicon, but let's take our, I mean, it's a little cloudy. It hasn't been washed, whatever. This is the rabbit bar spoon. It is on a swivel so that it should rotate for you. And then it's got this heavy part on the bottom here that I'm convinced is to help you crack ice. I don't know if it will. It's more like it cuts it because it's like it presents itself as like a line, like as a plane. It works. I mean, I'm cracking ice with it, so. It's just like cracking it into like discrete cleavage planes instead of spider webbing it and exploding it. That's fine. We got a couple of ice cubes in there. Oh, look, some whiskey. We'll pour some whiskey in there. Let's give this spoon a test. The question is, since it swivels on its own, does it always point to the middle? At this speed, yes, but if this is the fastest we can go, that's a problem. Let's go. Yeah, it kind of works. It's kind of cool. It's like a cheater spoon. Um, it does the turning for you. It's definitely turning and staying central. I mean, it works. It's cool. That works. Um, I don't like the length. It can't be longer because it would flex and that would be a problem for this. Um, I question the durability of this like plastic handle on the swivel. I wonder how long that'll last. And also not that you would ever get anything filthy in here, but you're going to want to wash this. Do you put it in the dishwasher? If you do, that's like a moving part. What gets underneath there? Does it get gross? Does this oxidize? I don't know. There's like a whole book here. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. This, oh shoot. This is a jigger. This, this bowl, which the strainer sits in is a jigger. My problem with that is if this is to keep your strainer from like sitting on the bar to keep it clean or whatever. Well, if I'm gonna use my jigger, I gotta put this down somewhere anyway, right? So now it's gonna sit here. 
but if I look in here, it's got one ounce, one and a half ounce, and two ounces. I mean, there's no quarter ounce measurement. I would like to see a quarter ounce measurement in there. I think that that's important to have. There's also no pour spout. And with something that's this huge, I suppose we should, in fairness, right? We should give this thing its due. Gives me some more fighting cock. Let's do a one ounce pour. Here's the thing. It's pretty hard with this huge wide surface area to get your pour accurate, honestly. It's, it's harder um, as in fact, and I'm looking at this, I tried to pour one ounce, but I'm definitely between one and one and a half ounces. And with this much surface area, right? That tiny amount of inaccuracy, that meniscus, because it's spread across, it's so much bigger, that is a larger amount that I'm over than I would be in, for example, this, if I went over. Now this is a one outside. I'm gonna pour this in because I wanna see the pour action. It pours, sure. But let's say I did one ounce in my jigger. Let's see how that compares to the one ounce mark here. Okay, that's one ounce. And it, you know, you're dealing with the wobble. So their one ounce is a lot more than this one ounce. I would say that their one ounce, if you pour to that one ounce, you're getting an ounce and a half. But you know, it's cute. It's very modern. You know, it kind of think, makes me think of like 80s modern, like um, like the Memphis school, but like maybe not Memphis style, but it's in that way. There's probably a name for that. I don't know what that is. Modern. I just don't think that this is a great tool. I did like this idea and I like the idea that it, oh, it's got a little caddy. It sits in there and maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's really just a bowl that they had to build to store this in. And then they're like, eh, put some marks on there. Maybe it's a jig or two. So you can take this and you put this in here and that is your strainer and it's silicon. This whole thing is like a flexible food safe silicon and you can put it in there and it fits exactly onto this. Here's a question. Does this work on like other ones? Are we reasonably standardized here? Yeah, actually, I think you could use that on another pouring, you know, on another um, mixing glass. And I got a glass here for playing around with. Let's say I was gonna pour this in. Oh, oh my God. It immediately, okay. Oh, there's an indentation there. You put your finger here. But see, the thing is, if you put your finger in that indentation and you try to pour, well, whoa, whoa, Jesus. This is a piece of shit, an absolute piece of shit. Because if I try to really aggressively pour so that it doesn't back walk like that, there's a real chance I'm gonna have my finger in the pour flow because I'm where my finger has to go to be balanced on this to keep it in there. I can't put my finger up top here or it doesn't work. I have to put it here. And look what I've done. This is a lot. And th that's open. You know, if your finger, the, if you can look right through that, that's wide open. You'll get your finger wet with somebody's drink, with your drink, whatever. If you don't put it there, it's going to break. If you pour gently, okay, in a way, it's gonna walk back up this. And that's the mixing glass that's built to go with this strainer. Don't buy this. Don't buy this for yourself. Don't buy this for anybody. It's a pretty design. I like the way this looks. I genuinely did not think this was going to be silicon. I thought this was, when I saw this, I was like, ooh, like aircraft aluminum or steel or something like that. That would be interesting. And I think that it's, it, why? That, now you, you look at it and you're like, but why does it have these huge flexible blades? Like, what is the benefit of any of this? It sucks. It just, uh, maybe you're supposed to do it like that. Oh, all right, wait, 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 wait. Maybe I'm doing it wrong. Maybe you put your finger on the, you, you put it like this and you put your finger at the high end. I mean, that does make more sense. It still backflows. It still stinks. I'm sorry. Nah, but I do think that I was probably using it backwards. Don't buy it. I'm saying don't buy the rabbit kit, don't buy the rabbit strainer, pretty as they are. They are designed to be very attractive, modern architecture ornaments. They are not functioning tools, okay? Stick with the stuff that they, they figured this out in the 1800s, mostly. I really, I think this rabbit stuff, pretty as it is, is built poorly and is designed to kind of prey on people who don't know what a quality tool looks like. They're very, very consumer grade. They just feel way cheaper than I expected them to. This thing, I mean, actually right here, there's like, you can see the glue from where they set this piece of plastic on this piece of wood is pouring out of the side here. It's not really good construction. I think the idea is that you would use it as a muddler and then unscrew this and use this as a, re a citrus reamer to get your citrus juice. Not the best way to get citrus juice. It's like very hard to measure that, but also this is threaded. 
and has to be screwed in and out. And it's very easy to misthread it. Like already, I wasn't even trying very hard. It's cross-threaded right now. If I crank that down, I'm gonna ruin it. Do you really have the time to thread and unthread? Oh, that gives a piece of shit. This thing is garbage. Don't buy this. Don't buy this. I, I physically cannot correctly thread it at this point. Trash. The rabbit stuff is trash. Really disappointing. I thought it was nice stuff. This rabbit stuff shows up on so many gift guides for to get the man in your life, to get the dude who likes a drink, get the rabbit stuff. You know why? It's because it's overpriced. And because when you do affiliate links on Amazon, it's by percentage. So if I have a blog like Uncrate or Word or whatever, I'm gonna recommend stuff that sells, stuff that's expensive, because I get a percentage of what I move. All right, that's why you do those gift guides at this time of year all the time, because it, it makes you money as a blogger or a YouTuber. The rabbit stuff is overpriced pieces of garbage. I have not yet, I don't think a single one of these has really kind of been like worth its weight in anything. Bummed out about it. It's a, it's, it is really disappointing. I thought they would at least be cool. I thought they would at least work. They really just don't even work. I'm not gonna link to it. Don't buy it, you don't need it. Put them out of business. Fuck that company. I'm serious. Like, I think if you make a bad product, like I think, this is Greg Philosophy 101, okay? Every ounce of resources that you extract from the earth or brew up in a lab, okay, costs tomorrow. It costs future generations the ability to live on this planet. Every time you convert matter from one form to another, there is an energy loss, which is why there is no way for us to dig our way out of the global warming climate catastrophe that we're in. You have to stop digging. Okay, because it's, it's always a net loss, always a net loss until we discover magic perpetual motion, until we have fusion or something, and then we can have a net positive. But you can't dig up anything out of the ground, turn it into anything else, and expect that to not negatively impact the planet. And if you're gonna do that, okay, to make stuff like this stupid overpriced piece of shit, okay, you're gonna cash in on our planet's ability to thrive for a, a crappy silicon thing that's not gonna last, that you're gonna hate and never use, all right? No, I think you should go out of business. I think you should just stop existing. That's my opinion about Rabbit. Fuck you, go to hell. Merry Christmas. Let's look at shakers. It's shaker time. It's shaker time. We got three. We got the OXO shaker. We got the elevated craft shaker. We've got the, the, the shaker 33. These, these two guys right here, elevated craft and the shaker 33, they are like shakers reinvented. OXO, why this? Well, this is probably the stuff that's available at Target near you, it's everywhere. I gotta tell you, you might have a negative opinion of OXO. OXO is a really interesting brand. It was um, the OXO Good Grips or Soft, whatever, it, Good Grips, I think that's what it is, their product line, really. It came about, they were developing products for people who had like Parkinson's or something. It's like a real, it's like if you ever go to industrial design school, like I did for five seconds, you will learn about the OXO story because it's super interesting. And it's, it's, there it is. There's design solving problems. You may not like an individual product from OXO, but here's a product that actually I think does deserve to exist. Probably. The other thing I would say too, is that like I use these like service industry style, um, Swiss peelers from Mercer. These are made by Barfly. They're very, very cheap. They have a high carbon blade. It does rust. You have to keep it clean. My wife hates them. She's very annoyed by them. They're all over my house. She went and bought a couple of OXO peelers. They are sharper. They stay cleaner. They work better. They don't look as cool or professional in your hand because they're designed for like this huge arthritis grip or whatever, but like it's a good peeler. So I have to say on the whole, I think OXO is a pretty cool brand. Not like Rabbit. Elevated Craft, this was a Kickstarter project and I've been interested in it for a long time. I don't know what to think about it, but both of these, if I'm not mistaken, are vacuum based. I don't love that idea because it, it, it removes the tactile feedback from the shaker. Like you can't feel it getting cold. If there's a vacuum wall in it, you don't know what's going on inside that shaker. And this is Cocktail Shaker 33, the best cocktail shaker since Provision. This has got strong sex toy vibes. Oh, weird. It's like a quarter twist thing. So a lot of these two, they don't use like the standard kind of ceiling. Okay, this is not great already. I'm not a fan. So right away, I gotta tell you, both of these are way prettier than Shaker 33. Shaker 33 better have some wild rocket science in this in this guy to make me want to use it. Okay, so let's open up all three. Already, just cracking this open, I don't like the experience of doing it. It's this like rubber, there's an O-ring here, like some kind of a silicon O-ring, which is this problem, it creates maintenance, and it 
quarter twists off and there's an integrated strainer here with a coarse side and a fine side, which is an interesting idea. And then how do you get into the shaker? Like physically, how do I take this part apart? Oh, wow. There's another quarter twist right there. Ugh, I don't love that. And it's, there's no way to, okay, wow. So, all right, there's three steps to opening this right away, right? Oxo, here we go. This has a built-in jigger right on the top and a narrow little pour spout. These are kind of meant to be replacements for a cobbler style shaker, which is not a great style of shaker, but it's the one that somebody's gonna buy for you if they buy you a shaker. I apologize too, I thought this was double walled. It's not, this is not a vacuum walled thing. It's just a standard shaker. This is the Elevated Craft, has a screw lid right there. And that's a very coarse threading, which means it shouldn't freeze up and lock. And then let's try to unscrew this part. Do you unscrew that? Yeah, okay. I would like a little better grip on the actual lid. This lid is a jigger. So it's got all kinds of measurements in there. Oh, there's all kinds of stuff in here too. Good thing we opened this up. There's a replacement gasket. This comes with a replacement gasket, which means that they're telling you the gasket will fail. You'll have to replace it. Has this packet of delicious silica gel candy on there that my favorite brand, Do Not Eat, throw away. I don't know, it's so tasty. And then, uh, what does it say? Cheers, elevated. This is the only one that gave me a note. I like the notes, sort of. Never put hot liquids or dry ice in your shaker. Do you know who I am? Shaker's dishwasher safe. Oh, it is dishwasher safe, but the dishwasher may cause unwanted wear and tear. Lifetime warranty. Hey, I love a lifetime warranty. I'm a big buy it for life guy. If I can buy something and have it be like infinitely, like Fjord Aven, Out Outerwear, Patagonia, buy for life companies, I love them. I bought a pair of Fry boots once. They cost me a lot of money. I brought them in there to, for repairs and they were like, well, we're not gonna fix these. You know, these aren't even boots. These are boot styled fashion shoes. I was so annoyed. Two ounces of vodka in each of these, okay? So I'm gonna take this thing, I'm gonna put two ounces in there. Well, maybe I'll do, like there's a two ounce pour. Sure, that worked. What if I wanted to do a half ounce pour? Yeah, it's a little easy to overshoot. It's a little hard because of the way the strainer cap works to see where that half ounce is coming up on you. It little surprises you. I was interested in that. This guy has a much more standard jigger with a huge wide pour spout. I don't really love how flared out this is because again, we're gonna run into that problem of the wider the pour spout, the more inaccuracy a small amount introduces. This of course has a huge wide mouth, but one thing to keep in mind, okay, at the width that these two match, this is five ounces, whereas this is an ounce and a half. So if you're pouring five ounces of anything into this, you're already, I mean, it's a lot. Um, so let's do, and this doesn't even go to two ounces. We have to do one and a half ounces, which is straight to the lip or a little bit shy of it. I can't go right to it because it's going to run over. And then a half an ounce is down here. Oh, and I went over it and I don't know what that number is actually. So I don't know. There's no marker there. That's one ounce. So that's one and a half ounces. And I missed the half ounce. It's hard to stop at that one half ounce. This one doesn't have an integrated jigger. You just free pour into it. Um, that's how it's done when you're using the 33. In truth, obviously use whatever jigger you want. That's one of the reasons I'm a little bit suspicious of these tools that have like, that it does it all kind of thing. Like they, they do, but they don't do it all very, very well. So um, let's get some ice. Each of these will get one large cube. We're ready to shake. Let's start with this one. Whoops, elevated craft. You know, we're not making a real drink here. We're just shaking vodka and ice. Interesting sound. It feels a little, the balance is a little bit weird for me. And I can feel the throw in there. The ice moving is a little, because it's a little restricted somehow. I don't know, it's not getting a huge amount of movement. The Boston style shaker is widest at its middle. This is a little choked because of the, the double walling. I think that's affecting how much throw we get. And then the other problem is I have no feedback from this. I can't feel my hands getting cold at all. So where's my drink? This shaker has prostate issues. There we go. We got to do like a roll pour or something. This is a problem that you will find with all of these cobbler style shakers. They have a hard time dealing with a pour. Like there's a lot of drink in here. That's just, I got to keep doing this. I think I got most of the drink out of there. This looks like a terrible vodka martini with a big sheen of ice over the top. It's not really the shaker's fault. It is the fault of the cobbler shaker. I'm gonna tell you what, this one looks like it's gonna be even worse. I don't know, it's weird though, because the strainer is bigger, but then it goes through a vent truly. Let's find out. Here we go with the OXO shaker. I gotta tell you, and it could be, this could be the further 
reality of that double walled thing. Maybe I couldn't hear what was going on because there's a vacuum layer insulating the sound, but I like the sound I'm getting here. That is nice. I can hear my ice moving. I got good feedback, I can feel the movement, and I can feel it getting cold, and it's ready, and I'm instinctively thinking it's another screw top, but it's not. I like that it's not. It's got that little gasket there. Let's see how it pours. Ooh, that's a good pour, isn't it? For one of these, that's pretty good. I mean, I would love it to be even faster, but that's not too bad. Still a little bit in there, but it is pouring. But I mean, it's cold. It's really cold, and if that bothers your hands, you're not going to love that. It doesn't sit flat. It's got like a little dimple on the bottom that keeps it moving. That's weird. Interesting. Is that intentional or is that... Did I... Maybe my ice like punched out the bottom. It may not be very durable. <laughs> we have another one actually. It's a unique thing. We ended up accidentally buying two. We should open the second one and see if it sits flat. So this is the other OXO that we just opened. But it looks like it's wobbling, but it actually sits flat. If you look at the bottoms here. This one is punched out from the ice hitting the bottom of the shaker, which I can't imagine possible. Not a great sign. I mean, I guess ultimately it doesn't matter. It's just that that thing's never gonna sit flat again, ever. So this is shaker 33. You first have to screw in this guy. It, it, you know, I make that sound like it's a big deal. It's pretty easy. It just goes in with a clip. This thing, I wasn't loving the action on, but let me get used to it. And it should click shut and then you can shake. You got a visual feedback, which is nice, right? And it is getting cold. Let's try to pop that open. I don't love that action, but that's okay. Um, so there's two sides here. There's a fine side and a coarse side. Let's try the fine side. That's a great pour. The way that the strainer is set up is a lot more like having a Hawthorne strainer on a Boston style shaker that was a fast clean pour didn't have to wait and i'm going to go back and swish it around or anything like that did a good job really quickly this has the best pour it is a dog ugly shaker i i kind of hate the way it looks so much i don't i can't really recommend buying any of these honestly of them weirdly shaker 33 kind of did the best job but it has the worst action for opening and closing i really don't like this at all i just find it it like won't now it won't open and you got to reach in here and grab this tiny little fingertip thing i hate it i just i hate everything about that but it it worked and it didn't dimple out on the bottom the oxo not a bad shaker all things equal not terrible i i think it's crazy that it dimples on the bottom from ice this thing is a solution to a problem you don't have. It just is. The elevated craft shaker, I'm sorry, it's just, it's not a terribly built product or anything. It's just, you don't need this. I don't think personally, and maybe you do, I don't want a vacuum walled shaker. I don't need it. It adds complexity and, and wear and tear issues. And is that really dishwasher safe kind of issues? I don't want threading. I don't need this screw together stuff. And that's the same issue here. This one doesn't have that. I think that that injects things that are just going to annoy you and slow you down, particularly the way this one seats. And then I guess, oh, you can pull out the gasket real easy. If you got to buy one of these, I go with the OXO, even though it dimpled on the bottom, because ultimately I don't care about that and I can smack it with a hammer. Um, because it's not double walled, it's not made of plastic, it doesn't look like a flashlight. It's not, um, and it doesn't have weird locking parts. I don't want any weird locking parts. I don't think you're going to use the, I guess you could. But I, I think that the built-in jigger just stinks. I really don't want anything that screws together. Even just like the thought of having to thread this up and get it lined up right and get it put together right makes me insane. It's just like not, it does, it, this is much open close. I, because of that, it uses a gasket instead of pressure. This will never, I'm pretty sure this will never lock on you. You will always be able to open this, which is one of the problems with cobbler shakers is that they lock. And that's probably why this screws together and why this does whatever the heck this does and why this is built with a gaskets like that, right? It makes it so that you will always be able to break that pressure pretty easily um, and it won't lock on you. So in a lot of ways, this does solve the problems of the cobbler shaker. 
I think that they needed to use better metal in this. That's all. All right. Right after this, we're going to move on to more mystery stuff that I probably think you don't need. We spent a long time on shakers. That was hopefully pretty informative. Want to look at decanters? Let's look at decanters. Let's look at, I got two sets of decanters. Do you need them? Hell no, you don't need them. Your whiskey does not need decanting. It just doesn't. Is it fun to decant your whiskey? Maybe. We got this one. This is <laughs> from Diamond Glassware. And I saw this and I kind of couldn't resist, which I guess means I needed it. Oh, um, now it's a piece of shit. Yeah, this is a problem. It's okay. It comes with two heavy-duty glasses. I mean, this might live on the How to Drink bar forever. I can't put my finger on it, but there is something really fun about this decanter. No human on the planet Earth needs this, right? Like, this doesn't make your whiskey better. Your whiskey doesn't need to breathe. It's just ridiculous. The only thing it does is take cheap whiskey and get it out of that cheap bottle and put it in a decanter. Now, the reason I'm looking at this and I'm not in love with it is because of this. Um, on a glass decanter, what you want is a glass on glass fitting because it's just much more durable, much more cool looking, classier. It feels heavy when you have those apothecary fittings. I don't know what that's called, like a ground glass top. This has this like cheap little plastic or silicon gasket. It feels like something you'd get at TJ Maxx and hey, it is something you would get at TJ Maxx and forever you'll be able to see that little silicon gasket there looking kind of crummy. I wanted this to be neat. It stinks. It's just dumb juvenile humor that I sort of love. This is a Van Savant decanter. This is ridiculous. Oh, wait a second now. This is actually ridiculous. This is insane, but this is actually kind of a nice decanter. Damn it. I didn't want to love this. I love it. So it's got a real glass top with a apothecary fitting. And I'm so glad I've got the opportunity to show you the difference there. It's I mean, this is snug and airtight. It's ground glass on ground glass. Boom. It comes with four little planet glasses and a lot of styrofoam. Nobody needs the styrofoam. <laughs> That's fun. So it's a nice little pour spout. It's a real metal pour spout. Meredith thinks you're supposed to be able to rotate it. I think that's insane, but I think she's also right. I think you are supposed to be able to rotate it. Let's try to put some whiskey in here now. I don't think you're supposed to go above the sails. I think that's bad for the boat, but I mean, obviously you could. You could sink the boat in your whiskey. I'm just going right to the water line. I hate it, but I love it. I'm not gonna lie. It's so extra and ridiculous. Like you don't need this. No human on the planet needs this, but I'm in love with it. It's, it's just absurd. Yeah, I mean, that's probably gonna live in the How to Drink bar forever. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, geez, that felt really cheap and breakable. Let's put some cheap whiskey into the old fisty. By the way, that seems like a big bottle. I don't know what that is, but that seems like a lot of whiskey. But one of my problems with this is that I want that finger full of whiskey. I want it whiskeyed up all the way to the top. I don't know why, I just do. Does it pour well? I don't even trust that this is gonna hold together, to be honest. And then if you want to pour it, I guess you, you hold it here, probably. Yeah, definitely. And you pour from there. Sure, it kind of works. They're both really stupid things. These are just frivolities that you don't need. This one is actually kind of classy, though. It's classy is the wrong word. It's, it is well built. Like, this is well built. I like this thing. It doesn't leak. It does work. It looks cool. It's very ridiculous. It's super duper extra. It's gaudy. It's not classy. It's insane but it's like so far past normal it goes right into the realm of kitsch and i kind of love it i kind of love it i kind of think it's going to live on my bar forever i don't know maybe not actually realistically it takes up a lot of space and what am i going to put in it but it it's fun it's dumb stupid fun i forget what this cost we'll put it on screen is that does this justify that <sighs> probably not but i mean at the same time like this thing's not poorly made. I, I'm telling you, this glass on glass contact, that is huge to me. Whereas this, this feels really cheap when you open this up. It, I'm convinced this is gonna shatter in my hand, but I mean, you knew that. You knew this was dumb. I, you know, it's kind of a surprise that this is less dumb than you expect it to be. This is garbage, right? Anyway, that's decanters. Do you need them? No, you don't need these decanters. But this one's kind of silly and dumb fun. I might keep this one. These are my whiskey stones. Uh, we got Brotech whiskey stones. We have the Amerigo Steel Cube whiskey stones. And we've got, uh, it doesn't even spin. Like if I can't spin the cylinder, it's not even fun. You got to put this on a spinner. You're going to make stupid shit like this. Yeah, yeah. 
You gotta be able to do something and spin it. Yeah, this is, uh, these are whiskey bullets. Whiskey stones, what the heck are they? I don't know, people keep buying these as gifts for people. The idea is that you would take this stone, you put it in the freezer, it gets really cold. You put the stone in a glass and you pour some whiskey onto said stone. And that way you can chill your whiskey without watering down your whiskey. The first problem with these whiskey stones, it might be uniquely American, this problem. But here in the United States, uh, we don't have comprehensive universal health care or dental care. Uh, and these will chip your teeth. And then you will pay to chip your teeth. You're not going to go after the whiskey stone people for the money to chip your teeth. And, um, you know, you can't just go out to the NHS H and get your teeth fixed. Like, this isn't going to happen. This is on you. And the next problem with the whiskey stone here is that the whiskey stones, these things are porous. So they they collect things that they're in and you can't really wash it back out. Um, I mean, the main problem is that they do a terrible job. They, they, they do a really bad job of chilling the, the liquid. Like, terrible, terrible job. We could do a thing, we should have done a thing with, like, thermometers or something to prove this point. But dilution is chilling. Yeah, you want to control your dilution, you want to slow it down, but adding cold water from the ice, melt water, that's how things get cold. This won't do it. There is simply, it's not a, a good enough heat sink to suck the heat out of the whiskey because that's how that would have to work for that to work and then they would neutralize to a place in between them it's like there's not effective that way this is like getting into the, the thermodynamics of this you can only take so much heat out of these down to about freezing and the temperature gradient between there and room temperature is actually not that big um it's just not and so it, it, it can't do that much there's a kind of cooking where you use hot rocks to boil water um but the temperature gradient is huge because you can put a rock into a fire and get it so hot that it will, I mean, it's insanely hot as, as fire hot. I don't know what the temperature is, but, you know, 700 degrees, 600 degrees, something like that, right? That's a huge temperature gradient. You know, if you think about the space between that Fahrenheit and 212 Fahrenheit that you need to boil water, there's a lot more oomph in a hot rock for boiling water than there is in a cold rock for chilling whiskey. They're simply stupid. They don't need to exist. You know, somebody somewhere had to dig these dumbass things out of the ground and cut them and polish them and maybe clean them. I mean, they're roughly polished. They're actually pretty sandpapery. And then there's packaging and they had to be shipped from this country to that country and that country to this country. It is a just, it's the waste, wasteful nightmare product, honestly. I suppose, I, I would suspect this would actually be better. I think these get cold. I mean, physically, this is colder. You can just tell by holding the metal, it does a better job. This is a better conductor of temperature, so it would probably do a better job than this. Also, there's some kind of liquid in here. I don't know what that's about. That's probably helping it store coldness, however that you want to point that out. But the problem is, again, it's not going to do a good job. And these are ridiculous. If this is what, le this is the level that your toxic masculinity is at, that you need to drink your whiskey off of metal bullet chilling stones. <sighs> who, who are you? Why? Like fix that you know like look at them the hierarchy of needs get yourself straightened out I, I can't it hurts it just physically hurts to think about this stupid ass shit who are you doing that for who 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 are you drinking your whiskey off these bullets to impress who who is it because i don't think it's women i don't i don't i'm not gonna make this a proclamation but i would bet money that the lady who sees a fella drinking his whiskey off of cold bullets and says i gotta get me some of that she doesn't exist just a hunch i'm just gonna bet that that lady only exists in your mind this is for you it's not for your friends they think you're a dork they just think you're an absolute dumbass drinking this shit you know what this is for <laughs> you, you go over to some guy's garage and he's got a, a kegerator and he goes hey check that out and you go what is that he goes oh, there's whiskey stones but they're shaped like bullets that is the life cycle of this product. That's it. They never get used. It's for that conversation. Hey, check those out. That's the whole it. You don't need it, man. I'm sorry. You just don't need this. This is stuff that you get convinced to buy for a whiskey person in your life because you don't know what else to get for them. And then they get them and they go, great. Thanks. I'm going to use these. Hey, these are cool. Oh, you want to use them tonight? No, no. These things, they got to go in the freezer. They got to get cold. We can't drink that tonight. And then they never, they go in the garbage or something like that. But they don't want to be mean. They don't want to tell you that this is garbage. Please don't buy this for your whiskey drinking friends. There's nobody, nobody wants this, right? But in the event 
that you are the person who's been duped by the whiskey stone industry. And you think that it's really important to have your whiskey be cold and not be wet. I'm going to introduce you to a modern marvel. It's called the refrigerator. Done. That whiskey will be real cold. Way colder than these stones will ever do it. And I can have as much of it as I want. I got, I got these little six stones. I need two of these to chill a glass of whiskey. Another glass of whiskey. You, know, you and your buddies have some whiskey. You want some more whiskey? Well, I'd love to, but we're out of stones. I'll tell you what, I got a liter in of ice cold whiskey in the fridge. It's coming right out of that fridge. It'd be great. You can get a kegerator. You can have a, a refrigerator with like a little, oh, oh, that's it. The, the keg, the, the decanterator. We're going to incorporate a glass decanter flow nozzle pipe into a whiskey fridge. It'll be like all like glass tubing. It'll all go through spirals and stuff. There'll be like senseless spinning gears, but the teeth are bullets so that like, you know, it's real manly and everything. And it'll have little engine pistons and stuff like that. And it'll come out really cold. It'll be great. I just hate them so fucking much. I really just hate them. There's just like products that don't need to exist that we're mining the future to produce. You know, whiskey stones are not the leading con you know, cause of global warming, but yeah, whatever, they don't need to exist. They have to justify their existence in my opinion and they should simply go out of business. The word decadent, the root of that is decay. This is a society in decay. This is, we're eat this is an Orosboros eating our own tail. This is everything wrong with all of us. This is my anti-gift guide. I did like the gift guide to the extent that I was willing to do a gift guide last year. And I stand by that. It's just like basic stuff that's good to have in your bar. Products that I've vetted and I say, these are the ones to get. Get these for the drinking fan of your in your life or yourself or whatever. Uh, this is the stuff that always, I think, shows up in those stupid listicles. I don't think you should buy any of this. I mean, some of these things was like, maybe this is the okay, this is okay. This, you know what you're getting here. This is fun, but you don't need it. Buy better things, buy useful things, buy durable things. Buy things that are actually going to um, work and be helpful, or at least entertain you. Well, that's the show. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this venture into uh, useless crap was of interest or to you. I hope you're enjoying the show. If you are, I don't care. Like, subscribe, comment, please, or don't. That's fine. Here are more episodes of How to Drink since I've been making the show for six years. Uh, you may have missed some of these. There's some fun ones up there. Good night. Good luck. I'll see you soon with another episode of HTD.